may the good Lord take a liking to you. Hello, everybody. This is Papa Blue Shirt. Hello, everybody. I am so happy today because today I pass, wait for it, 7,000 miles. <laughs> 7,000 miles on my Peloto all-wheel drive e-bike. It's been quite a ride thus far. I've done some modifications and stuff, and we'll talk over that today. But uh, yeah, 7,000 miles. I can't hardly believe it. I've only had it. I think I bought it, I don't know, probably five or six months ago. <laughs> so I'm really racking up the miles now. So uh, yeah. So we're taking a ride today, and uh, we'll do our review how things are holding up and all the modifications that I've done. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Alrighty, let's get down there. <laughs> 7,000, I can't hardly believe it. Well, there's the bike. Let's take a look at it, see what it looks like after 7,000 miles. Okay, I fibbed. 6960, I mean, yeah, 6960. <laughs> Uh, but I'm gonna ride probably about 68 miles or so today, so we'll be over today for sure. But uh, here's what the bike looks like. As you can see, I added an extra battery there. And that's just not no regular extra battery. That's the monster stock battery. This thing is 22 and a half amp hours. And uh, if you're used to riding other e-bikes with a little 12 and a half or 15 amp hour this battery blows them out of the water <laughs> but as if in that wasn't enough i had to buy myself a 24 amp hour battery and the 24 amp hour fits in the normal spot so i put the 24 amp hour in the stock position because it weighs more than the back than the other battery i was able to balance it a bit more that way uh, Cause that's a lot of weight on the back. I mean, that's <laughs> like 13 pounds, I think it is, or something like that. Anyways, uh, here's my seat. I probably got 18,000 miles on that style of seat. I went through a whole bunch of seats before I got to this one. And uh, once I got this type here, I said, yep, that's it. And if that wasn't enough, I got a suspension seat post under here. Let's see if I can take this off, this cover off here. Voila, look at that. That is a game changer. If you're going to change one thing for comfort, that would be it. Seats are kind of a personal thing. I mean, this seat, it, this is the one I ended up with, and I love it. But some people like a bigger seat because depending on how you ride, if you ride more upright or not. I like the smaller seats because uh, the other seats always make me sweat so bad. And this one is you know, really nice. Uh, for that but if you're going to do one thing for comfort that would be it right there i mean that changed everything i can't believe i rode 10,000 miles <laughs> without it it changed everything uh, i call it my lazy boy rider um what else did i do I, I finally broke down and put drink holders on here i got these two they uh, come in a a pair and uh they fit nice i can slide my thing in and out uh what happened i had this in a different drink holder and it popped out when i was doing 35 miles an hour hit the pavement rolled around the top broke off i was able to put it back together but i thought man i better get something else <laughs> since i'm riding now up to 100 miles a day um, i need to have when it's 100 degrees outside i need to have something along with me so uh, it's just plain uh, stupid not to hit, not to do that. If I'm going on a 35 mile ride, you know, I wouldn't have to bring nothing. But when you're out there on 100 miles and it's 100 degrees out and the high, very high humidity, so you know the heat index is 115, 120, you need to have water along with you. So that's what I did, and that works out. They got little little straps here that that you're able to to hook them on there with so that works out really nice what else we got here i got my little bag here i got this little bag here i put my tools in and it fits right in that little slot there so i really like that i also put my asthma inhaler in there just in case i have a problem when i'm out on the road my emergency inhaler those of us that have asthma <laughs> 
there's nothing worse than having an attack and not having your uh, inhaler. And uh, like they say, if you can't breathe, <laughs> if you can't breathe, nothing else matters. There she just come back from her ride. Mom always leaves her bike up underneath there. So when I come down to the shop later this afternoon, I don't have to walk. <laughs> I just ride her. And I think they rode about 10 miles today. And she just passed 6,000 miles on hers. Oh yeah. All right, and what else I did, you know, as I said, I put dual batteries on here. I hooked up a battery balancer. Both of these are hooked up at all, all times. So when I come back, I just plug in each of them to the battery charger and then, then I'm good to go. Okay, and I put a new free wheel on there. And I put, uh, so you're not like a hamster when you're doing 35 miles an hour. And that really changed everything. If you're gonna do one or the other, the free wheel or the crank, I would do the free wheel because it's easier. But I also did a new chain ring. This is a 50 tooth chain ring. And uh, I stayed with the triple. Um, I don't really need all those gears, but I uh, wanted to make sure I had enough room here because sometimes when you add a chain ring, there's not enough room here and it hits the frame. You know, the bigger you get, the less room you have here. And uh, if you'd have a sangle, that, that goes in a lot further. And so you see all that room there. That extra room there pushed that big sprocket out this way. So uh, you can see it there. So that gives you that extra room so you can put a bigger one. I could actually put a bigger one on here. Probably a 52. But this one works really good. It's just right for what I need. And uh, I can ride on PAS5 all day long. I'm not a hamster. I can go 35 miles an hour and just ride, 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 ride. And uh, there's a lot of people who don't want to pedal when they're doing 35. I'm not riding this as a motorbike or anything. I want to actually get some exercise. So, uh, But I want to also go fast. So this is this is fixed all that. And so that really adds an upgrade. What else? Got a really bright headlight. And a really bright tail light. And then I bought these little things here. The price of those are really re reasonable. And so it adds an extra layer of, uh, you know, so you can be seen. This ones need to be recharged, I think. But uh, what else? I can't think of nothing else here. Oh, this here, I, I mounted the battery. I made a thing, a wood thing here that would fit in the in the pack rack frame, and uh, so I can take the battery off and I can use my bag if I need to and then I can just put the battery inside the bag. So that's a really handy feature that I had here. Oh yeah, and my uh, I also added these these uh, pegs here. These are actually these are actually uh, lug nuts. And uh, well, the way this is made here, it's really hard to get a wrench on the on the stock a nut so you can take off the front wheel. If you're just doing it one time, it ain't no big deal, but it, like me, if I need to take it off to, so I can fit it in my uh, van, um, I need to have uh, an easy way to get that off and on, so that really helped. Huh? Yeah, I get over Where here. did you go, 6,000? Almost 7,000. I beat you. Okay. <laughs> All right. So this is Mama Blue shirt. I got my blue on. Yeah. Okay. Hey, believe it or not, it's supposed to be 88 today. And look how she's dressed. <laughs> she got a big old sweatshirt on. Wait a second. No, it's not 88 yet. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's like 78. No, it's totally different. No, okay. it's probably not even that warm yet. But anyway, let's not go there. <laughs> All right, so I have 6,079 miles on my bike. It's right there, here. yeah. It's hard to see, but get closer. 
You can see it if you get close. Oh, there, there you go. go. We gotta get the shine. There you go. Six thousand seventy-nine. Yep. It is a power. Red, red power, power mic. Um, I really like it. It. Uh, I think we had changed the back tire once since I've had it. I got it in October of 2020. And yeah, as you can tell, I only go probably about 10 miles a day. That's right. And I hit all the back roads. I don't really like the highways. Uh, one, it's not just me. It's my daughter that goes riding with me and I just don't wanna be up on the highways. Um, it's a little scary. But anyway, uh, yeah, I go the back roads or we go up on trails with it. And it stays pretty clean. So how's um, the bike holding up? I love it. It's holding up great. I don't have any any problem with it whatsoever. Put a little drink holder here. Yep. And uh, I don't know if, if I showed you this before, but if I can get it open. Sometimes I'm not strong enough after I go out 10 miles. I get a little weak yet. Because I don't know. See yeah. how it folds like that? And then it folds in half, it too. It folds in half again. Yeah. So, you can put it in a... I put mine... Well, you watch the videos. You see how I load it up in the van. So, uh, anyway. Yeah, I love my, my bike. And, you know, I quit riding bike probably over 30, mi 30 years ago. And I thought I'll probably never get on a bike again. And we did it in 2020. Nothing better to do but go out riding bike. So, and I don't have no regrets. Anyway, well, have a wonderful day. Bye. Oh, there's the tread on the bag. You can see it's getting pretty thin. Uh, I changed that tire. Uh, 5,000 miles ago. Here's the front one. The front's actually the original one. So those of you who are interested in if the all-wheel drive would change the way the front uh, wears, um, I would say no. I mean, I would say no for the most part because uh, you don't use all-wheel drive all the time. I mean, if you use it a lot, I'm sure if you sp spun the wheels a lot off-road or something, yeah, you'd use it up faster, but... On a normal on a normal uh, basis, no, it doesn't change a whole lot. Uh, I got ten thousand six hundred miles on my EcoTrick tire, and this looks about like it is wearing the same. So uh, I'm thinking it'll probably be uh, probably be about the same. But anyways, so there's my crank set. Um, I put the original pedals back on. I'm going to update them here really soon to some nice blue ones. As you see, this one here has lost it, its uh, reflectors. <laughs> um, I was riding along one time and I heard a jingle jingle. And I thought, ah, there's probably in something in the road. And I thought, ah, oh, I better go back and look. Because usually when that happens, s something, <laughs> when I'm out mowing the lawn or something, if I hear something weird, it's usually something going on with what you're doing. So I went back and there it was. And so I, I picked it up. I still got it. But... Uh, think of anything else um bike has a nice ignition so i think that's a nice very nice feature um like i said it's got all these extra gears here i don't think you need that many but fall i'm gonna be going up to the land between the lakes and doing some off-roading up there so you know maybe i'll use a lot of those other gears that i don't normally use i typically only use the top three gears that's all i use when i'm riding on the road Yesterday I had to do some work with the bobcat because after all that rain we got, I don't know if you've seen my our, uh, our flooded video where um, we had a flood and all the rain got up in the house and stuff like that. But if that wasn't enough, it rained forever. Like two weeks straight it just rained and rained and rained. So I was looking around the property now that I can walk around a little bit without sinking down in and, and uh, I saw along one of our hills here along the creek where uh, there was a hole, man, it was, it took me three bucket loads to fill that hole up. That's nice and calm this morning. 
in the fall, Mama's gonna wanna be fishing probably. I like giving Mama a hard time about it, but it is kind of cool this morning. We're under a heat advisory now for the rest of all the next few weeks, so it's supposed to be in the upper 90s, so. Won't be cool like this in the mornings for the rest of the week. I don't know if you remember, when I was doing my 2,000 mile review, I had a flat. <laughs> hopefully we won't, hopefully we won't repeat that here today. That tire is getting pretty bald, but like I said, I run my eco trick a lot further down than that, so. And I do have flat out in these after my, having a flat at 2,000, I had two flats in a row, because there was something in the tire. And, uh, I decided to put some flat out in and haven't had no problems with it, you know, since, so. Hopefully it will be une uneventful and I can go back and eat my waffles this morning. This morning I get waffles. <laughs> this morning I get waffles. So, it's gonna be a big urge to end my ride early today, but we'll see how it goes. Oh, that's nice. A lot of dogs out. Lots and lots of dogs. Yeah, if you want to put some serious miles on your bike, you put a double battery on it. I think I could go on PAS 3, I think I could probably go 150 or 200 miles. Or maybe even more. I mean, it's just unreal. I can do. 75 or 80 miles or I should say I have done 75 miles I think it is on PAS 5 and I still had juice when I was done so you can get a lot of rain and if you're riding on a trail I'm going to try to do the Tunnel Hill Trail twice I'll go up and back that's about 55 miles and uh, about 55 miles or 58, I think. And uh, I did it with uh, one battery, and I still had two bars at the end. So I'm sure I can do it twice. And I'm gonna do that as a practice run because I want to get up and do the Katy Trail sometime. And I'd like to do the like to do the Katy Trail in just a one go. That's 240 miles. So, probably have to ride real slow at first, and it's gonna be a long day, but yeah, I wanna see if I can do it. Not too shabby, an old guy out here doing 7,000 miles. So, a couple years ago, was flat on his back in the living room floor all day in pain. So, getting an e bike has given me my life back. And uh, there ain't nothing like the feeling when you're out riding. I say that it makes me feel like I'm 16 again. And that's a hard feeling to get over because I just enjoy it so much. And if it makes me feel like I'm 16, you know, hey. I think it's funny that people say, yeah, get a real bike, you know. <laughs> uh, you probably added up the miles that they rode over the last year, it'd probably be zero. Because they're just blabbering out. That's okay, let them blab, I don't care. I've reached an age in my life where I really don't care. I really don't care no more. <laughs> All you older guys and gals who think you might want to buy an e-bike, your family might say, are you crazy? You on, on a bike at your age? Just smile at them, just do it anyway. Because it'll change your life. It'll change your life. 17,000 miles in the last few years in my life has been changed. Like I said, if, if something makes you feel like you're 16, it's probably something that you want to do a lot because it makes you feel good. I tell you how I found out about eBay. I had no idea they even existed. And, um, I was watching a YouTube video of a guy on a unicycle, a powered, and you know, those, those power wheel things, whatever they're called. 
and uh, with my back issues, it looked like fun, but with my back issues, it was not something I was going to be able to do, I don't think. around and all of a sudden the e-bike started to come up and I thought now something like that I might be able to do so I bought my Equatrix because it was it was so it was so reasonable and I could I could buy it and I could see if it was something I could do and if I couldn't then then I wasn't out that much I mean I can't believe how reasonable they are now and I uh, really cheap well, they're really they're really reasonable now so if you wanted to give it a try there ain't no better time than right now but anyways I bought that uh, eco trick and I was hooked from the moment I started riding it hooked from the moment I started I think I stand at 10,600 miles on that right now it's hard for me to ride that anymore because I, I bought this one and that one has a flat because I rolled the tire off of it and just hadn't got it around to changing it. Right up here there's a there's a graveyard in here somewhere. Right there. See it back there. <laughs> last, uh, I believe it was last fall, I went up in there and to see what it was, what it was like. And I'll leave a link for that down below. And really interesting, really old tombstones in a cemetery that's no longer being being uh, taken care of. And. Uh, it's like 300 years old and to my surprise a large number of the tombstones are still standing usually over the years you know kids go up and not, knock the things over and things like that and uh, so that says a lot for the people around this area that they respect the dead but it was like going back in time you know there was a tombstone up in there in a fenced in area you know that, that wrought iron that really thick wrought iron and uh i think the grave was like 150 years old and uh there was a big old giant oak tree in there and and uh, probably when they planted probably when they planted probably when they buried the guy it was just a little twig and it had grown up and filled up the whole thing almost I think that's kind of neat. There's noise and nowhere it's coming from. It had to be in an airplane. What? I'm riding through the area now where I try to hold my nose. There's a chicken barn over here. And you can get pretty thick through there sometimes. Which is in another reason why I have my hoodie. <laughs> I can pull it up over my face. It doesn't block at all, but at least it'll smell like a laundry soap and not like, like chicken burn. <laughs> ah. yeah. You know, when you're out riding these roads every day, you get to see everything that's happening in, all over the neighborhood. That used to be a field there. That used to be a forest over there. And every day I got to watch their progress. make it into the field for cattle or something. But I got to watch the progress every day. Yeah, there's uh, kind of 
kind of an unusual thing here that I've never seen any place else. Uh, being close to the Mississippi, um, a lot of buildings around here, they use a barge covers as a roof. I know they must reach a certain age on the barge where they can't use them anymore. And, uh, what they do is they build all the walls and then they come in and they set that on top so they don't have to do no roofing stuff. So it, it's uh, it's kind of neat. Uh, we had one one farm that was right in the path of the, the, the right in the path of the tornado, and they ripped the top of it up and bent it over. But on a lot of them, it never it didn't do nothing. It just blew over it. So it seems to be really strong. Right through here, I saw a bobcat. He's probably not out today. Going up this hill here. Yeah, once you reach a certain age, you don't really care what everybody says or what they say. People who care about you are not going to hurt your feelings anyway. And you ever wonder why Grandpa wore that ugly tie that you just couldn't stand? Well, he reached a point where he didn't care what anybody thought anymore. <laughs> That's why he wore it. Or maybe he wore it to spite you, I don't know. <laughs> ah, but lighten up, people, lighten up. If we were all meant to be the same, we'd all have the same things. We'd all have a cookie, cutter everything we'd all be driving the same kind of car we'd all live in the same kind of house we'd all wear the same shoes yeah I told my kids I'm the one who made the thing where they had the jeans had all the holes in it because I wore them like that to school <laughs> way back in the day not because I wanted to but that's because all that's all I had I come from a single family home and uh, it was really weird I was raised by my father. Usually a single family, they're raised by their mothers. And, and uh, so in areas of, uh, of style and all that, you know, he kind of lacked in that area. The things you do, the things you wear and all that, that's what makes you, you. Like I said, if we want to be a carbon copy, we don't all wear the same thing. Like I said before, I usually wave at all the cars that go by just because I want them to see me as a person and be happy, maybe brighten up someone's day, but not everyone, not everyone enjoys waving. And so what I would see is I'd wave and they wouldn't, they wouldn't uh, wave back and it kind of irritated me there for a while. And then I got to the point and say, why, Papa, why are you letting those people irritate you? Why should their reaction, why should their reaction dictate to you what you're going to do? So now I wave and I don't even look at them. I just wave. So then, then I don't have their response. I don't know if they wave back and uh, it, it doesn't affect me then. And so that's one way I handle them. Back there was a bunch of those uh, barge covers. Looks like they're gonna make something here soon. One of the reasons I like to go so fast is there's certain parts of my route that I'm on the highway and I want to get off and on the highway as fast as possible. And so this helps me to get off on the highway. And then I can head back here. This is the point of the route that I figured out my battery was Back to see it off the road I went right here. Come through here almost.
Let's hit this mailbox right through here. It does look like they mow it now. When I went through, it was like that. Almost like that. It wasn't quite as tall, but yeah. <laughs> so I'm glad for my fat tires. If I didn't have my fat tires, I probably would have wiped out. So all those people say you shouldn't ride fat tires out on the road. I think they're mistaken. It's just because you start on the road don't mean you're going to end on the road. <laughs> I can count many a many a many a times where the fat tires have saved me. So it does make a big difference. We got 10 more miles here. And we'll cross the 7,000 miles. Five more miles. Five more miles. Getting close. Puppies out here today. There's like eight or ten puppies up here. They are by the house. <laughs> They're so cute. You know, puppies would stay puppies and be potty trained. <laughs> There's some puppies too. There's some bulldog puppies. <laughs> but if they would stay puppies and with the same attitude, but yet be easily housebroken. <laughs> of course they chew up your shoes all the time, wouldn't they? Well, I'm going through my tree tunnel. This thing's going to turn over here real soon, I think. It'll be a nice place to turn over. I like going through here when it's really hot. It's like, it just feels good going through here. I wish it was a lot longer than what it is. It's only about a half a mile, I think. Look at all the turkeys, more turkeys. Having a, tur having a turkey convention out here. 7,000 miles. There it is. 7,000 miles. Can't hardly believe it. <laughs> 7,000 miles. Ah, not too shabby for an old man. 7,000 miles. 7,000 miles, not too shabby. 7,000 miles. Yeah. Oh, I can't hardly believe it. 7,000 miles for this old man. I think it's only been about five months I've had this. Over 7,000 miles in five months? Wow. You can tell I'm having a ball with it. You wouldn't be riding something that much if you weren't having fun. Here's a neat thing here. I, I owned this bike a long time before I knew about this, but that the sun hits that display and hits you in the eyes, you can just go up and just go up and do like that. And so you, you can take it out of your eyes so it doesn't blind you when you look down. And it also helps when you're doing maintenance on the bike you have to turn the bike upside down uh, you're not going to break the display because the display rotates out of the way i really like that part a really handy feature i usually turn back there and go around the other way and uh it ends up being probably another 15 miles or so but oh, the girls are waiting for me saturday's our waffle day and uh I eat waffles and my daughter eats pancakes and so it's kind of a special day and because I'm doing this review today I'm kind of just a bit behind than what I usually am so I'm sure they're waiting for me so I'm gonna head for the house I still got uh, I don't know probably 18 miles I think or something like that so but by the time I get home and take a shower and everything I'm sure that I'm sure the waffles will be on the table. Be like Fred Flintstone. I want the food to be a photo finish. Well, that's where we're at right now. Going by another chicken bar. Going by another chicken bar. <laughs> it smells not the greatest here. But, almost 50 miles. Well, getting close to the end here. Oh, it's been a nice ride. Beautiful day, my 7,000 mile ride. 
And looks like we might make it home with no flat. <laughs> yeah, I forgot to talk about the cruise control. If you hold the down button, it'll flash walk and then it'll flash cruise and just let go and then it's like you're holding the holding the throttle the whole time. Real handy if you're going through areas that has a lot of hills or you don't want to keep putting on and off the throttle or hold it. Or like I use it sometimes when I'm out on the highway. I don't want to be on the highway for very long, so I want to run through there as fast as possible. So I'll put it on good cruise and you know, along. And I pedal along, and so it's, you know, it's the same thing really, but you just go a little bit faster. And you can get off the road a little bit faster than you would normally. So that's a real handy feature. And uh, the, the cruise will set. The cruise will set to wherever how far you're holding the, the, the throttle. If you're holding it all the way open, it'll uh, it'll be all the way open. If you're only going halfway, it'll only go halfway. And then it works just like a tire when when you want it to go off, you hit the brakes, and then it goes off, and then it goes off. So that's a real handy feature. I only use it when I'm out on the highway mostly. Well, there's the. Uh ending miles as the cicadas sing in cadence <laughs> loudly 45 volts left now that's in just one battery this uh, display will only display one battery because this the, the balancer will switch it off and on so it'll only show one at a time so that's almost 46 volts left in each of the batteries took me two and a half hours took me a little longer because I was filming and there's the ending miles you see the the energy bar there says we have two bars over the half <laughs> so i could go a long ways yet but i could go a long ways yet but those waffles are calling me <laughs> well thanks for riding along with me today i uh, had a fun time on my seven thousand mile ride in review yeah, I think it'd be hard to go wrong on this uh, Peloto. Uh, it's just it's so much fun. And uh, my goal is 10,000 miles this year. So hopefully we'll reach it before the end of the year. And uh, I'm on pace too, so we should. So, <laughs> all righty. I thank you so much for watching. Goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. And here's what was calling me while I was riding my bike. Waffles on Saturday.